What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another uh, another rendition of SAT Khan Academy Problems Being Solved Live. And today we are looking at angles, arc lengths, and trig functions, another one of the Khan Academy SAT math problem categories. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We're going to go straight to live, uh, straight to screen share and hit these problems. If you're watching on Instagram, make sure to jump onto the YouTube channel and you can actually see the problems being solved. All right, let's do it. Once again, I'm seeing these problems for the very first time. I have not seen them before. I'm solving them with you, which as always is part of the fun. Here we go, here we go. And begin. So it says here, question one of five, which of the following is the measure of the above angle in degrees? So this is conversion of radians to degrees. This is not too bad if you know the conversion, but the, here's the way that I think about it. You can, you can think about this just like regular conversions. Like for example, if you're converting feet to inches or inches to miles or something like that. So we write out the original angle, 13 pi over 12. And we, we make conversions. What we do is we just multiply by some, by some ratio that has the, let's say the unit that we're trying to go away from opposite the unit that we are, already have. Okay, so what let me, I'm not sure if I'm being totally clear. What I mean is we've got pi on top, which means our radians are basically on top. And we want to go from radians to degrees. That means in this ratio here, we know that radians have to go on the bottom and then an equivalent degree amount could go on top. Now, you could put two pi, you could put one pi, it doesn't matter. As long as you got something in the radians down here, really when we think about radians, we just think about pi. That's our central component that we need to eliminate. And so now we say, well, well how many, all you gotta remember is pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. And if you remember that, you get to go. So now we've set it up, we've got our equivalency, now we just multiply. So look what happens right off the bat, the pi's cancel out and that's exactly what we, we wanted. And now we've got this multiplication problem. And this is a no calculator section problem, by the way. So you have to do it. You have to be able to do this using good old arithmetic, mental arithmetic. Uh, this can be eliminated. I don't know, wait, can 12 on 10 plus five? Yeah, it can, 15. So 15 times 12 is actually 180, if I did my math right. So we can cross this off. 12 divided by 12 is one. 180 divided by 12 is 15. And then we end up having 13 times 15. So that is 150 plus 45 is 195. But, you, but if you wanted to here, we could do 13 times 15 and carry it out that way. If, and that's totally fine. But the conversion is 195 degrees. B, and that's the final answer. Let's see if we are correct. And we are indeed. Let's move on to question number two. Question number two is, I'm done. let us load it here. All right, five pi over six. Which of the following is the measure of the above angle in degrees? Another conversion. Let's remember how we did that. Same exact process. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Sneeze, my bad. Five pi over six. So we follow the same protocol. Again, pi goes on the bottom because we're trying to knock out the pies. And the equivalent degrees goes on the top, which is 180. And now pies go away. Do the multiplication. Well, 180 definitely is divisible by six. So divide both of these guys by six. Six divided by six is one. 180 divided by six is 30. This is an easier multiplication. And then we just do multiply across. 5 times 30 is 150. The denominator would be 1, but that's why we don't need to write it. C, 150 degrees. And we are good to go. Yes, we are. Excellent, excellent. Let's do this guy now. Clear the board, please. Thank you. And... 
Boom. Here we go. Question three of five. If theta equals four pi over nine radians, what is the value of theta in degrees? Once again, this is, these are all conversions, strangely. And I don't know. Uh, let's see if we get a different type of problem for number four. Uh, these are all the same. So what is the conversion? Well, we just need, again, same idea, 180 on top, pi on the bottom. These guys go away. Divide 180 and 9 by 9. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 180 divided by 9 is 20. Hopefully you, that makes sense. Let me multiply across what's left. 4 times 20 is 80 degrees. Boom. Let's give it a shot. We are correct. Oh my gosh, it's the same type of problem again. Well, I just thought this was going to be actually calculating arc lengths in terms of in terms of giving a uh, circle, a radius, stuff like that. And this seems to be mostly just angle, uh, what's it called, conversions. That's okay. We'll get really good at it. 240. Oh, no, wait, this is different. We're going from degrees to radians. So this is a little curveball. So now we got to think, how do we go from degrees to radians? So this is fun. So let's make sure to use 240 degrees. And we're going to still turn this into a fraction. The other ones were in fractions, but we always need it to be in a fraction. If there's no fraction, we just put it over one times. Now, all we need to think of is since we need to get degrees out and radians in, we need degrees on the bottom. So there, you see how they're opposite sides, one's on top, one's on bottom, so they cancel out. And then we're going to need something radians on top. So we're going to have to put something with pi up top. But if you remember, we're just probably going to use pi. So we say pi on top. Let's just use one pi. And that is equal to how many degrees? 180 degrees. So it's just flip-flopped. It's 180 to pi ratio. And now we can do some nice elimination. The degrees goes away. So we can kind of go whoosh, whoosh, like that. And now let's divide by a common a factor and it looks like 60 is going to be the winner so 180 divided by 60 is 3 240 divided by 60 is 4 now multiply cross and we get 4 pi on top and we just get 1 times 3 or 3 on the bottom and that's it 4 pi over 3 let's see if we are to correct those yes we are Last one. Last one of the more of the Friday morning. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Three, two, one, and boom. Which of the following is the value of tangent of 225? Yikes. Oh, and this is no calculator. This is interesting. This is actually, <laughs> they jumped to like a, a pretty, Pretty tricky problem, or like at least trickier than the other ones, for sure. So let's go ahead. You need to know a little bit about the unit circle here, or not, actually. I mean, you can also sort of sketch this out and see what it looks like. So let's think about what we're doing here. Tangent of 225. If you're taking tangent of something and you don't have a calculator, you got to assume that it's a special right triangle, because otherwise it's not really possible. And let's see if that's indeed the case. So 225, let's start with our little unit circle. Let's just start going around. Now, you don't have to memorize the unit circle, but I'd say this base amount of familiarity is pretty pretty necessary. So we're going, first of all, where does, what is the reference angle of 225? That's what we need to solve this. Meaning where, okay, so let's, let's I'll tell you what a reference angle is in a second. We're going around, we, we just traveled 180 degrees. 270 would be all the way here, but we're going halfway. There's another 45 from 180. This is one, it's 225 degrees. To figure out what tangent of 225 is, we need to know what the reference angle of 225 is. And that is the angle where it stops between this sort of ray that shoots out and the x-axis that's it so it's kind of like in this case we go all the way around and look it's after 180 
that we have that we have this extra this is the chunk that we care about and so so what does that angle make well it's basically in this case 225 minus 180 it's not always minus 180 but in this case it is um like in quadrant one the reference angle is just the angle itself but anyway so now we have 225 minus 180 225 minus 180 and that gives us 45 degrees and that's it that's a reference angle and it is a special right triangle the special right triangles nicely are in your in the front of your SAT math section. So you can look it up if you don't have it memorized. I just wrote a song about special right triangles. You should check that out on my on my YouTube channel. And it goes, uh, what does it go? 45, 45, 90, 1, 1, root of 2. So it, that gives you the side ratio. So it's like 1, 1, root of 2. Okay? So this is the ratio of the sides. And all we're doing now is we're taking, let's say, this angle right here, which is 45. We're taking tangent of it. So what's tangent? Tangent is opposite. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. If you don't know Sokotoa, you should learn Sokotoa. You should watch my Sokotoa music video. So it's opposite over adjacent. So opposite of this 45 is 1. Adjacent is this guy, 1. So it's just 1 over 1. But we have one over one, which is just one. But we're not totally done yet. Now, it it could be D, but there's something else we have to consider. It could also be A. So why could it also be A? When we're calculating tangent of these values, we now have to figure we have, we have to consider what quadrant these angles end up in. Quadrant one. If this were in 45 degrees, we're in quadrant one. It would be positive one because we're looking at it's a ratio of x over y, okay? So we we look at what's happening in quadrant one. Well, both the x's and y's are positive, so in this quadrant, tangent is also positive. In quadrant two, we have to look at the ratio of x and y. In this case, think about it. The y's are still positive because we're up here, right? Y's are still positive, but the x's are negative, so a tangent in this case would be negative. What about quadrant three? And by the way, this this is not for true for sine and cosine. These are little, those are a little bit different, um, but I'm not going to go into those right now. Just remember that tangent is a ratio of x over y. Sine actually corresponds with y. Cosine score corresponds with x. But now we're talking about the ratio. What about quadrant three? Quadrant three, we've got negative x's. Let's say this is negative four, and we got negative y's too. They're both negative, so ratio of of x over y or y over x is positive. So that means since we're in quadrant three, tangent is positive, it is indeed positive one. You gotta check that. Can't always assume it's positive. D is positive one, and that's it. All right, you see how it's drawn out here too? Same exact idea. That's pretty much it. We've we've done it. We've gone through the problems. Let's go back to off the screen share. So that's it, guys. I hope that was helpful, and I hope that was fun. That is the addition for SAT Khan Academy problems today. Make sure to tune in weekday mornings for more SAT Khan, Khan Academy problems being solved live. And if you, of course, want to or miss the live stream, you can just watch the videos afterwards. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments section. Like the video if you find it helpful. And if you want more of these, make sure to subscribe for this and more awesome math goodies. Thank you guys so much and have a great day. Take it easy.